Good morning, this is the Lou Rockwell Show. Recently I did an interview with Alex Jones, the maestro of Infowars.com, and I thought you might like to hear this interview. He helped get Ron Paul in Congress. He's worked in Congress, he was his chief of staff, before he went on to be the best-selling author and had the Von Mies Institute and the rest of it, and found the popular news site, LouRockwell.com. As a political expert and elections expert, what his view is on all of this and where he sees this going, and I want to ask him again, I have some major issues with Donald Trump, just like Ron Paul does. But the fact that they're so scared of him and that he is a nationalist is why I'm supporting him, because at this point, I'm just supporting open elections. Lou Rockwell, am I wrong in saying this is one of the most epic times in the history of the United States? I mean, it has a 1776 feel to it, or am I wrong? Are we at that crossroads that you and Ron Paul have warned about for 30 years? Well, Alex, I certainly hope so. I mean, I think we definitely we need a, an ideological and a moral upheaval in this country. And it's why the regime, the neocons, the Republican establishment, the Democratic establishment, the uh, academic establishment, the corporate establishment, all, bankers and all these people fear populism because it, it riles up the people. It says, you know what, you're being ripped off. Not only are they are they are they bad ideologically, they're stealing from you. They're ripping you off. They're taking your freedom. They're taking your money, and they're all uh, living uh, very well thanks to it. Uh, so Trump has the ability to really connect to people. And like you and and Ron, I have many differences with Mr. Trump on the issues. Although I think where, but there all these guys are bad on trade from my standpoint. They're all bad on all the issues that Trump is bad on. They're all bad on. On the other hand, the places where Trump is good, whether it's immigration or the political correctness movement or the uh, uh, especially foreign policy questions of war and peace, he's uniquely different and better than the others. Uh, is he for real? You know, I, I, uh, after, <laughs> after so many years of watching this stuff, I'm sure you forgive me if I'm not 100 percent sure, but uh, I think he's stirring up just tremendous um, outrage among the American people, tapping into that outrage. We've seen it even in the polls. People are more and more distrust the government. They distrust the big media. They know there are things that are desperately wrong. They fear for themselves. They fear for their children and their grandchildren. They just are very worried about what's happening in this country. They all know this is not the same America they grew up in, and they don't like it. So Trump is stirring everybody up. We'll see what happens. I should just mention, by the way, the Mises Institute is not a political or a partisan organization. So I'm simply giving my own views when I when I talk about some of these things about uh, Trump. Sure, you guys promote Austrian economics. Yes, and libertarianism. Uh, but I, I I will say that I think Trump um, is doing a whole lot of good. He's scaring everybody evil. I mean, if you look at the people who really hate the guys of Trump, it's like a who's who of the creeps of the country. Uh, so that has to tell us something. And he's uh, just much better on f foreign policy. When we're facing people, I think probably Hillary is the worst, the most likely to start at World War III. Uh, Cruz is probably in, uh, not far away from her. Um, when we were facing people like that, Trump, I think, is the least likely to start a war. I think that's the best thing. He doesn't want to just randomly start a war with Russia. They have two bases. They're doing nothing to us. We're funding ISIS <laughs> against them. And that's what I like best is the fact that he wants us to be strong, to be able to defend ourselves, but says we're not just going to go around attacking people. And listen, I do the same calculus you engage in, Lou. I look at him and I say, look, I don't just trust somebody off their rhetoric. But when I see true palpable fear hundreds and hundreds of millions thrown against him by the Republican and Democratic establishment, mm -hmm. the stealing of the election, they're so desperate, openly, desperately, uh, the Chinese communists, the, 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 the socialist pope, the Mexican presidents and former presidents and Hollywood and the kitchen sink. Uh, <laughs> I've been told by high level Trump people, and I'm just going to leave it at that, that he really is a closet libertarian, a closet anti-New World Order guy. And more and more, he comes out against Saudi Arabia. He comes out uh, against China. I mean, I really think it's true more and more. And uh, so I think that's why they're so scared. He comes out against NATO. He asks, why, why, should we have all, why should we have all these bases all over the world? If you look at a map of U.S. bases, they surround Russia. There aren't any Russian bases surrounding the U.S. U.S. feels they're perfectly fine to 
send uh, destroyers armed with who knows what kinds of weapons very close to St. Petersburg and, and uh, Russian territory. And the Russians are supposed to just think that's fine. You can imagine what would happen if the Russians sent a bunch of destroyers into the Gulf of Mexico. Can you imagine and, if there were 50 Russian ships around the <laughs> well, U.S.? I'd be calling for well, blowing them up. Well, I mean, there would be, you know, the U.S. would be blowing them up. So, you know, the U.S., of course, as we're told by all the neocons and all the creeps, is the exceptional nation. The rules that apply to everybody else don't apply to the U.S., just like they would argue that the rules that apply to all the other human beings Where does this arrogance don't apply to come the Clintons from? or the Bushes. Well, I, you know, I think it has something to do with government. You know, if you go, uh, I, I don't like to go to Washington, but one of the things that always strikes me about Washington is the level of arrogance. I mean, these people even walk arrogantly. They talk arrogantly. They all think of themselves as being at the center of the empire, and therefore they're very, very important. Of course, they're not important. But the uh, U.S. feels it should rule the world, the solar system, you know, whatever. They believe their history's actors, to quote Karl Rove. Well, they... They believe, you know, is it any different from the Roman Empire or the Babylonians or the Egyptians or the British or all, all these uh, empires in the history of the world have this kind of arrogance. Everybody else is just dirt under their feet. Their boots should be on your throat. And of course, most of all, they concentrate on the people they fear the most, which is not foreigners, it's Americans. So they're worried about Americans tossing off the yoke. And so when they see something like what's happening with Trump, it's why they're so desperate I'm afraid they may be successful, but it's why they're so desperate to deny him the nomination, why they're willing to be openly with these ripoff festivals in Colorado and elsewhere, where they're going to take his delegates. Very few, maybe a half of the Trump delegates will actually be Trump supporters. Maybe a half of them will be, will be uh, like double agents. So if they can deny him the uh, nomination on the first ballot, and that's, of course, what they're working very hard to do, I, I think he's not, he's not going to get it probably is going to be Cruz. I don't think they can actually get away with bringing Paul Ryan in. Getting back to what you mentioned, you will know someone by their friends and their enemies. Mm -hmm. I've never seen such a laundry list, and I'm kind of ashamed of Americans, mm -hmm. and that there's not even more support for Trump when the whole world's bossing us around. I mean, this is really pathetic. Like we're some col colonialized, controlled nation run by multinationals. But I guess that's what it's come down to. You know, I, I, I hark back to uh, one of the seconders for Grover Cleveland's second nomination for president. And the man uh, nominating him talked about it, how great Cleveland's first term had been, and it was be so wonderful, he had his second term, how he was great in so many ways. But then he said, but you know, we love him most for the enemies he has made. So, I mean, it does say something about a man who his enemies are, who hates him. And in Trump's case, I mean, it's, it's definitely a rogues gallery it's like a, uh, you know, the, one of those books in the police station with all the photos of the criminals. That's what, you know, they could have the, the book of the anti-Trumpians. That's what it would look like. And uh, you should have them facing front and facing to the side. <laughs> uh, these, are, these, are, these are very bad people. George Soros, and I mean, you know, we can go down the list of all the people who have dedicated their billions to destroying this country, to, uh, um, to changing things radically in the worst kind of a way. Uh, these are people who you know, in, in some sense, there are aspects of communism they want to bring here. We already have some aspects of communism with the Fed and other government programs. Uh, they'd like to make it worse. They want to, uh, of course, inundate us with uh, welfare immigrants and uh, all the rest of the all the rest of the horrible things they're doing. Well, let's talk they about their plan, the Rockwell. Free speech. Yes, sir. But, but but first, getting back into the election, since you mentioned it, you know, you've been chief of staff for Ron Paul. You've run congressional campaigns successfully. Have you ever seen a steal this blatant? And what do you expect to see next? I mean, your expert view on the election. Well, the, the uh, I wasn't there to see it, uh, but the 52 Republican convention, uh, chaired by Earl Warren, uh, stole the, uh, the nomination from Bob Taft, who was sort of the Ron Paul of his day, great man, and gave it to Dwight Eisenhower, who was the establishment candidate, the Rockefeller, the Rockefeller candidate. Murray Rothbard always said if only Robert Welch had referred to Eisenhower as a conscious, dedicated agent of the Rockefeller conspiracy. He would have been exactly right. So they, what they did was they threw out uh, elected uh, and um, Taft delegates and installed in the convention Eisenhower delegates in various states to give Eisenhower the nomination. But there was no social media in those days. It was just the establishment press who were all, of course, cheering for, for Ike. And um, they got away with it then. 
I don't think they're going to get away with it this time. They may get away with giving the nomination to the, the creep of the moment. Uh, but I think they're not going to get away with it with the American people. I think this means, and I would love to see it, got my fingers crossed, the demolition of the Republican Party. I, I come out of the Republican Party uh, before going straight. And I'd love to see them go down. They really are a rotten organization. Yes, there are good people who are Republicans, but the establishment of the party in the states, in the national party, in the Senate, in the Congress, and the sure. people in the various bureaucracies, these are evil people. These are awful people. And to see their their uh, little game taken away, how sweet it would be. Lou Rockwell's our guest. Separately, I want to get back into the campaign and back into other big issues that are on your radar. But the economy, the big bubble, the big event that you've talked about so long, the Federal Reserve saying we're going to you know, just go back to zero interest rates, the IMF, the World Bank. Uh, Trump's talking about the big bubble. China's imploding. You really are, first and foremost, an economic expert. What are the other experts at the Mises Institute saying about what's happening? Well, first of all, another thing they've attacked Trump for is saying there is a bubble. And as he thinks it's a very dangerous bubble, and he fears that it's going to pop. And of course, he's exactly right. There is a, a huge bubble that's been pumped up by the Fed in order to reward Wall Street, in order to make stocks go up, in order to make Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan and all the rest of these, these firms even richer than they are. Uh, so that's been that's been the deliberate policy. Now, of course, we're going to have negative interest rates, zero zero interest rate. That's already unnatural and unbelievably economically destructive to have the Fed holding interest rates near zero. But of course, they're going to bring them below zero. At the same time, they want to outlaw cash because one of the problems for them with zero interest rates or even negative interest rates, people think then why should the heck should I keep my money in the bank? when they're charging me a fee, much better to take it out and either keep it just in cash or buy gold. So in order to prevent that from happening, they want to outlaw cash. They do not want you to be able to, you can transfer your money from bank A to bank B. Of course, they're okay with that, but you are not going to be allowed to take your money out in the form of cash. This is what they'd like. So they're talking you know, about what politically correct person is going to be on which dollar bill, which 20 or the 10 or whatever. Of course, I must say, I think they're all pretty awful. If you get on the uh, if you get on one of the U.S. notes, uh, you're pretty awful. The late Bert Blumert used to uh, hark back to the days when U.S. coins and notes had no politicians on them, but had Lady Liberty or American Indian or Buffalo or things like that. And he said that uh, you know things have taken a bad step when they start to put politicians on the money. Although he said the actual worst step when you really need to watch out is when they put living politicians on the money. And that's now happening. Not quite there, but is there going to be an Obama $10 bill at some point? I don't think we can rule it out. Uh, these people are so arrogant, so crazed. And that's what scares me. They have all these advanced weapons. They're totally arrogant. Everything they're doing now basically falls on its face, but they don't care. They just move forward. Speaking of that, how big a deal is it to see all the big newspapers talking about U.S. government stood down on 9-11, U.S. government covered up for Saudis, uh, that has got to really scare the power structure. Well, I think it's I think it's great. Of course, those uh, 28, first of all, the whole 9-11 report is, uh, shall I put this, highly flawed. Uh, as Ron Paul and you have said, we need uh, an honest investigation of those events. Uh, but the, you know, of course, it all should be published. And the Saudis are a very corrupt and rotten regime. Uh, they are allowed to get away with all kinds of things that nobody else is because I don't want to shock anybody, they pay off American politicians. There's huge money involved if you go over there and kiss their hand, hold their hand like the George H. Bush, George H. W. Bush and George W. Bush used to do, uh, Obama, you know, saluting and uh, bowing to them and so forth. He's getting the big bucks in return. And maybe when he's in office, maybe it's when he's out of office, but they have a lot of money to hand around in Washington. It's got a lot of people on the payroll. So if this actually happens, no, I think it's a great thing, and I hope it will encourage more interest in this. I was thrilled to see that uh, you know Wayne Madsen is questioning whether uh, uh, Rafael Cruz, uh, uh, Ted Cruz's father, might have had some very uh, shady connections back in the days of the anti-Cuban exiles involved with the CIA and the Kennedy assassination. So maybe Cruz's ties to the regime go much deeper uh, than any of us have thought. I mean, we've always known, as Roger Stone points out, he's a Bush Republican with a history of being a Bush Republican, but maybe he's a Bush Republican and even uh, even a deeper and more sure. important sense. But the whole, the, the regime is corrupt. 
The, the deep state is corrupt. The empire is corrupt. It's economically corrupt. And that maybe is what's going to bring it down. Not only what Trump and uh, other people are doing to, to uh, make the American people feel we don't have to put up with this. We're actually not, it's not written in stone that we have to take it. We don't have to take it. So that's very, very important. But also the negative interest rates, uh, the banks getting um, shakier and shakier, the dollar getting shakier, the whole, uh, the whole world empire of finance getting shakier. This is, there's, you know, there's real trouble ahead on that, on that, uh, on that. As, and of course, they've continued to build the police state here at home. I mean, these are really a very bad bunch of people. U.S. government, the biggest, richest, most powerful government in the history of the world by many magnitudes. Forget Stalin or whatever. Uh, Stalin didn't try to tell you the size of your toilet tank. Or not to use the word mother or father in public schools across the country. On the literature, when you enroll your kids, don't use what mother or father. That's offensive. Well, that would be bigoted, Alex. You know that. So, no, these, these people are, uh, uh, are, you know, just unbelievable at, at the whole SJW business, which is like the official, the official uh, part of the regime. Again, not saying mother and father might hurt somebody's uh, feelings. Can't say male or female. You can't say his or hers. <laughs> I mean, yes. Uh, I do think there's huge opposition to it, even though it's suppressed. I think Trump is calling on this opposition, is helping stir it up, rise it up. And, you know, people get courage when somebody is, so they see somebody else speaking out, when they, they know what he's saying is true. That's right. He's a bellwether. He's a bellwether on populism rising. I want to ask you what you would do in the economy, what a Von Mies you know, Institute view is on that. I want to go to some phone calls. I want to talk about political correctness as well, not just here, but in Europe. This true totalitarianism where they're wanting to arrest filmmakers or people that criticize radical Islam. I mean, it's happening in Europe. They're trying to bring it here. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. Every day I have, no exaggeration, probably 15 articles that I don't even cover one of sometimes, where they are trying to arrest filmmakers in America, trying to shut down talk radio, openly in newspapers calling for, you know, the time has come to shut down Alex Jones. He's a criminal. He wants violence. They lie incessantly. Remember Glenn Beck when he said, Ron Paul wants to blow up buildings with a money bomb and we need to arrest him and his supporters. I'm not attacking Glenn Beck, but I've been there. I've seen them deceive. Today I was watching Fox News on the elliptical this morning and they go, he's calling for violence. Uh, and then they cut to the clip and it's not Trump calling for violence. I have never seen the gloves off like this and they can barely try to suppress Trump. I mean, it's, it's neck and neck right now, and it shows their power is waning. The question is, will they start a huge war or do something catastrophic like Kim Jong-un threatens before they get unseated from power? And the bigger question is, is it our own weakness that has empowered these people? Let's talk a few minutes about the solution, not crony groups, not combines, not monopolies, not one-sided trade deals for insiders. W tell us about... Ludwig von Mies, the von Mies Institute, Austrian economics. Let's spend five minutes on that and a few minutes on any other subject you want to cover and then some calls. Well, Alex, it, it, you know, it just has to do, as you point out, with freedom. So um, uh, if we look at what has made has free, frozen up the economy, made it crony oriented, made us all significantly poorer than we would be. We are significantly poorer as a people because of the existence of all these federal programs, these federal wars. Uh, but if we have to look, what, what's the worst thing the government does to us? It's probably the Federal Reserve uh, and the manipulation of the dollar, uh, the, the banks, that whole apparatus bringing on uh, recessions and depressions. We're probably in a recession right now. It's going to get worse. Uh, maybe it won't be horrifically worse. We can certainly hope and pray, but um, a lot of bad things happening economically. Um, government regulations that impede entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs are the spark plugs, are the dri really the driving force of an economy to the extent that they are hindered, taxed, and uh, ordered about. It makes us all poorer. So all the government regulations, of course, all the government spending, the taxation, which of course has bad civil liberties standpoint, as well as ripping as, a, you know, it's, uh, as well as uh, theft. Uh, you may get mugged on the street by a private criminal, but you're not necessarily going to it's not going to necessarily going to ruin your whole life and change everything else you do. The government, of course, when they rip you off, when they mug you, 
Uh, it can affect everything in your business, everything you do as an entrepreneur, uh, has very, very bad effects. So really, we, we need less government. Uh, maybe we're going to get less government if, if all, you know, all these troubles continue. This constant attack on property rights, that's what's going on in North Carolina and these other states where uh, the state government says, if a restaurant wants to just have a male and female bathroom, that's fine. So they want to outlaw that and force a private restaurant to have the bathrooms that, you know, that, uh, you know, that Caitlyn Jenner or whatever would like them to have. That's just, that's, talk about fascism or socialism, but that's, you know, there's very little freedom of association left in this country. Uh, we should have freedom of association. Business people should be able to hire or fire whom they want, just according to the contracts they make. The government ought not to be involved. There ought to be freedom of speech. All the things that the government is attacking that's what we need. So just a, a rule of thumb, whoever the, whatever the government is going after, whoever the government is demonizing, those are the people to be supported. Uh, it's, I think, a, a good, a, just a general good rule of thumb even over that. Anything the government is telling you to believe, don't believe it. Anything they're telling you to do, it's not a good thing for you to do it. Maybe you'll do it from a prudential standpoint, because of course they've got the guns. We're not people of violence. That's, that's the government way. Uh, we just want to educate people, we want to change hearts, we want to change minds. And by the way, as you keep pointing out, if we change enough hearts and minds, if people are willing to speak out, if they're willing to act, if they're willing to do it for themselves and their children, their grandchildren, their communities, their churches, their businesses, everything they care about and love in their lives, uh, it is actually possible to undo what's going on. We're not, it's, we're not frozen with our feet in cement to put up with That's this. Right forever. It's not true. Well, that's why they're trying to extinct any free market choice or any grassroots free market activity, because they know no one can compete with free market. Well, that's why they have government schools. And of course, all these things, from our standpoint, from the standpoint of parents and, and students, are a failure. They're not a failure from the standpoint of the government. The government would like to dumb us all down. They'd like to extinguish critical thinking, independent thinking. And it's all, it, you know, so their failure, their great successes from the standpoint of the government but of course, failures from our standpoint. So we want to push back about everything the government is doing to us. They have no right to uh, take our money, to run our lives, to start wars. How many millions of people has the U.S. government killed in its career of wars, aggressive wars all over the world? Tens of millions of people. I mean, we talk about the crimes of the, of the Chinese communists, and we should, of the Soviet communists, and we definitely should, of Hitler and all his people, we definitely should. But the U.S. government uh, is one of the great butchers in the history of mankind, while, of course, going around and pretending to be morally superior. So they're not morally superior. They're morally inferior. They have to be opposed. Uh, first of all, in our hearts and minds, by our own learning, we have to learn something about economics, about something about politics. I totally agree. And, and, and the way I get socialists to wake up is explaining that most of these multinationals write the laws. They're pretty much tax exempt. They're the ones pushing socialism at the grassroots to make us dependent so that we don't get uppity so they can control and cut the cream off the top. It's crony capitalism that that these people are setting up and then they scapegoat real free market. Can you spend a few minutes describing, plus history's shown this, what even a little of free market does is create such renaissance it quickly displaces the other systems just by choice in a bloodless revolution. That's why they act like it's the devil and want to shut it down. Well, of course, it's true. And even even as bad as things are today, even as corrupt and as fascist, socialist as the U.S. government is, it's, is the controls of the economy, there are still great things happening. So we can see wonderful entrepreneurs, wonderful uh, companies serving us, wonderful uh, products that are available to us. There's still so much great stuff going on. But yes, it only requires... Amazingly enough, just a small change to bring on much greater prosperity. And there's no way of telling if we uh, if we had a free market economy in this country. Sure. If we didn't have the federal carbuncle there in Washington uh, uh, diseasing all of us and diseasing the economy, there's no telling how wealthy we'd be. everybody would be. Much wealthier. There would never have been a society. The current day America would look like. Uh, Appalachia compared to what uh, uh, could be the case. So we're capable of um, a socially much healthier society. Because of course the government's attacking families. It's attacking all the all the uh, indices of social health in order to make us serfs. 
They all they don't want to make us poorer. They want to control us. And that's because they're scared of what they call disruptive technologies and, quote, empowered individuals. The Pentagon even admits in Jade Helm they're practicing to take over the U.S. domestically. And they say we're worried about empowered individuals, we're worried about new economies and new systems we don't control. Now, I'm not demonizing our military itself, but the controllers are giving them that mission. You know, the special forces says, uh, you know, free the oppressed or defend the oppressed. They've totally turned into the opposite of that. And there they are scared of the next innovation that'll come from private industry in the next tinker's garage that'll overthrow all these monopolies they've created. Well, just think about any of us who've ever had anything to do with the government, people who've been in the military, people who've had to deal with the bureaucracy, all of us at the DMV or whatever. The government as an institution is a very stupid thing. It's just a, like a low IQ thing. It's not only not effective, it's, deli- you know, it's massively massively destructive and stupid, whether it's bombing people, whether it's economically bombing us. Uh, it's just doing horrible things. And there's, of course, a vast propaganda campaign to make you think they're doing you good. And it's disconnected. You, you don't have, you don't know what's good for yourself, but all the creeps, the Hillary's and the, and the Obama's and the uh, Paul Ryan's and the, all the rest of the, you know, the uh, cruises of the world, they know what's best for you. You know what? Uh, the, no, they don't. They're, in fact, your enemies. And doesn't it show their arrogance, Lou, that they would try to run Hillary and Jeb in, in everybody's face? I mean, it just shows their disconnect. <laughs> well, and also I think they're going to run they're going to run somebody in, in Trump's place who's going to cause a lot of trouble for them. And uh, I just hope, by the way, that Trump, I wish to goodness Trump were planning right now to run as an independent. He'll still be able to run as an independent for quite a, t- a Couldn't while. Couldn't he run here. as a libertarian? <laughs> they have ballot access. Yeah, but the libertarians, I'm sorry to say, would never would never nominate him. I'd like to see it, but I, I don't believe it's possible. He would have to, in my view, have to run as an independent. And Richard Winger, who's the great ballot access guy, I had a piece from him in Rockwell.com the other day about how Trump can run as an independent. Also, existing parties he could get, the, the Reform Party and so forth, he could get on the ballot with. It is possible for him to do it. I think it's a very good thing to hold over the Republican Party's head, for example. I mean, he's always said from the beginning, he's only staying loyal to the party and the nominee if he's treated fairly. Well, treated fairly. I mean, he's, you know, it's, he, they put a, uh, a ball and chain around both his legs. So um, it's, uh, he's, you know, very much uh, uh, justified in every sense to be getting ready to run as an independent if they steal the nomination from him. It's incredible. I, think, I agree with you. By the way, he could win as an independent. I think they've miscalculated, Lou. I mean, if they really, I was looking at how arrogant Prevost is, like a smiling vampire on Fox News, and then this other curly, Mo Hewland, arrogantly, la- they really think laughing at us. What's weird is they laugh at us, arrogantly rubbing it in. It's like they're mentally ill or something. Well, they, they do laugh at us. We're, we're, we're all laughable. We're just the peons. We're the cash cows. We're, our only job is to work hard and give them the money, give them the power, and uh, let them live it up. So they're a very bad bunch. Uh, Priebus and Curly and all these people are, of course, uh, just typical. You're right. Let's take a few calls. We're about to go to break. Let's get one in now. Lou Rockwell's our guest. Uh, I mean, look, my, my job's easy now, folks. Stuff is so out in the open since I've been on 21 years. You've been fighting tyranny for 40 years, Lou. I mean, do you agree with me just briefly that tyranny is now more brazen and open than ever? Our job yes. is easier than ever. Yes, that's true. And I think more and more people are waking up Young people are especially waking up because of the, the student loans they face, getting degrees that are totally useless in the marketplace. So another big ripoff, of course, is the whole, the whole education system designed and run by the government, ripping off students, and uh, there's, there is resistance. Teaching them for so an economy need- that doesn't even exist. Kevin in Canada, you're on the air with Lou Rockwell. Go ahead with your question or comment. Uh, it says you had a point here about Senator Sessions and NATO control. Go ahead. I mean, I mean we... Uh... I watch the show quite a bit, so the video that you put out was uh, Senator Sessions questioning Leon Panetta, uh, Secretary of Defense, in regards to when the United States has the authority to go to war. Now, oh, yes, and he said when NATO gives us the authorization. He said we don't get it from Congress now. Yeah, that's, that's powerful. Look what Trump, uh, the powerful thing is look what Trump said about NATO. He didn't put his friend down and say, well, the reason why I'm saying this is because of, because of Sessions. But I can almost I can almost feel in the back of my mind that the reason why Trump bring this up in the first place 
is because a good man like Sessions actually bring it up to begin well, with. Well, here's the deal. I'm not going to brag because it's actually dangerous and they pay attention now and write stories about it. But let me just tell you this. Unless Donald Trump is the greatest actor ever and he's conning everybody, behind the scenes in the last four or five years, he's learned about all this stuff. Before he ran, I was told this by, by a movie star. Who, who knows Trump on record and friends with him. And, the, you know, the truth is Trump is dialed into all this. He's dialed into Ron Paul. He's dialed into Lou Rockwell. He's dialed into my show. But specifically, I was told Ron Paul, Lou Rockwell. And quite frankly, I'm not going to get into it, but the Trump people are obviously going to want to reach out to Lou Rockwell and other people. Uh, believe me, Trump found out about all this like a decade ago. He didn't believe it. Now he knows it's true. He really he is an egomaniac. I mean, according to his inside sources, he does want to save the country, though. He's a good egomaniac. And he just doesn't like screwing people over. He loves free market. He's done some things, you know, that aren't perfect in the market. You know, once he's building something, somebody's trying to stop him, then he goes out, you know. I mean, he is aggressive alpha male. They're scared of him. And the word is from a whole bunch of sources is that he, and I keep getting told, watch, he's going to do this, and he does it. And so, and I'm not going to talk about some of the behind the scenes stuff, but the point is, is that it's pretty scary to know that the establishment is this scared is what I'm saying. Uh, that's a good point he makes, though. Senator Sessions makes a big deal out of being told you don't have authority over where we go to war with the authorization to attack Syria, which they finally helped defeat with Ron Paul's and of course Senator Paul's help. And, and of course, Ted Cruz jumped on the bandwagon later, but looking at that, knowing that he's advised by folks like Sessions, that's, that's a positive for me, Lou Rockwell. Well, sure. I think it is. And, and uh, it's very important to go after NATO. It's just one of the organizations, you know, and then if, if uh, Albania is capable of getting the U.S. into a third world war under this, under under NATO. And there are other organizations like this. The U.S. has got these so-called alliances, and they're actually imperial alliances with countries all over the world. Remember how Georgia tried to get us into war with Russia? Yeah, we need to get out. We need to get out of, out of NATO. We need to free Europe, by the way. This is a, a method for the U.S. to control Europe. Uh, they should be freed. Uh, I'm sure they're sick and tired of being U.S. colonies, except for their the people at the top who are, of course, all on the payroll Merkel. of uh, Merkel and the evil Merkel and uh, Cameron and uh, Holland and uh, people of that sort. But I'm, there are a lot of people in Europe who are ready for a change, too, by the way. It's not just in this country. This is an international freedom movement. And I want to be clear. The big mega banks that have hijacked this country that, that, that you know, folks back to Congress in the 1913 talked about, they are doing all this in our name. We're paying for it. We don't even get a benefit. And so we talk about the U.S. occupying Europe. I agree. Technically, that's what's happening. But at the same time, it's the very same corporate interests that are occupying Europe are occupying us. So we're all in this together. Isn't the Brexit exciting, Lou Rockwell? Oh, I think the Brexit is I'm 100 uh, percent for it. This would be so fantastic if Britain gets out of the EU. The EU is an evil uh, global government kind of institution, highly bureaucratic, ordering people around, very corrupt, very dangerous. And uh, all of Europe needs to get out. And it's great of all the opposition in Eastern Europe. Somehow the people who lived under communism are more freedom oriented than the people further west. Uh, so maybe we're going to have to look to Hungary, Hungary and Poland and uh, Slovakia, Czech Republic and so forth. Uh, maybe these countries are going to save Europe. Maybe they're going to set a good example for us. And just, you know, apropos of that, uh, your, your caller's point, Alex, it's so important to free yourself to the extent you can from the medical monopoly, uh, you know, Obamacare and all that uh, is dangerous to your health to the extent you can be independent, that you can take care of your own health. Uh, very, very important. So don't just don't be a shill for the government in that way either. Uh, that's all of Obamacare is designed to sicken you, to get rich off you, not to cure you of anything. As to, uh, you know, about, uh, you know, Trump being an alpha male, what, you know, uh, what is wrong with that? Isn't it nice to have a masculine guy rather than a metrosexual? I mean, it seems to me Trump Trump is a nice change. And I think it's why, by the way, he appeals to women much more than you would learn from the media. Although I think we all know, what did I see just the other day? Six percent of Americans say they fully trust the media. And I guess they probably all work. That's for the good media. news. The only thing more unpopular than the government with a nine percent in Gallup was the media at six. Exactly. <laughs> And there was yeah. another poll, too. The, the media is the government. I mean, the media is connected to the government just as surely as Pravda and uh, Nazi papers and communist papers all over the world were connected to their governments. Uh, the only thing is they pretend to be independent, but of course they're not. They've already collapsed. They just don't seem to know it yet like zombies. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, let's talk to John in Texas. You're on the air with Lou Rockwell, lourockwell.com. Hi, Alex. Go ahead, brother. 
uh, communist goals, which is part of the congressional record, right at the top of the communist goals, it says promote free trade. And the fact that all of our manufacturing jobs went over there to that evil communist police state in China to build them up into the first class superpower is the greatest act of treason that's ever been done to this country. Sure, but that's not real free trade. I mean, when China has a 35% economic currency tariff on us, it's not free trade. When they don't have the same standards as we do, they put them on us, that's not free trade. So people get confused by this and think, well, then why is Alex Jones or Ron Paul or Lou Rockwell for free? I'm for open trade as long as it's a good deal. Uh, well, I'm, what's your specific point, John, that we'll let Lou Rockwell respond here in closing? Well, I just thought that was one of the, the big acts of treason, the fact that that free trade agreement was used to arm up China into a first-rate superpower. And, it was a one-sided uh, deal, though. It wasn't a fair trade, absolutely. It was a one-sided deal. And, uh, so, Lou, I mean, what would you trade. say about that? How well, do you gauge that? I, I would say, by the way, just, I, made, I made the point that China's military budget is less than 10% of the U.S.'s. So it's not, it's, it's not a first-class superpower. Uh, uh, it's just another thing they're wanting to gin up. They want a war with Russia and China. Hillary has talked about this. Cruz, they would like a world war. So what is free trade? Because I do believe in free trade, although, you know, just like George H.W. Bush and George W. Bush and Obama talk about freedom, they mean, of course, anti-freedom. Uh, they talk about free trade, they mean anti-free trade. What is free trade? It means if I'm a businessman, I can sell my goods to somebody in Germany or China or Mexico or any other place, and I can buy from there without the government interfering. It doesn't mean these managed trade treaties that are designed to, like NAFTA, to benefit the cronies. 14,000 so pages long. That's not free. It's a screw job. I actually looked through NAFTA. I spent a whole day, <laughs> the terrible talk about wasting a day, going through the NAFTA treaty. And of course, it was just full of how they're going to benefit Caterpillar or Westinghouse or GE. Look at NAFTA. Look at, yeah, look at the TPP. If they got away with that, you know, why not just go ahead and cancel elections? Foreign groups write some multi- thousand page piece of garbage, 200 pages of summary, and then we can't see it till it's already globally passed. And then Ted Cruz votes to fast track it, but claims he's against it when his wife helped write it. If I'm ashamed of anything, Lou Rockwell, it's this. I've been neutral on Ted Cruz because of how he was acting in the Senate on a few issues. But man, if he isn't a Bush, Rockefeller, sleeper cell, nobody is. Well, he was a member of the Bush administration in Texas. He was the, the solicitor general of the Bush of George H. George W. Bush. Uh, then he got a job through the Bush administration at the Federal Trade Commission. The federal the federal Bush administration is versus the state Bush administration. Uh, he and his wife were heralded as the first Bush campaign marriage. That they were both working for George W. Bush and they got married. And uh, these these people and of course she's a total busher. And so this uh, is the fourth you know, fourth term. Yeah. Well, I mean, Cruz, Cruz is, uh, I think Cruz is a very bad guy. It's not a coincidence he looks like a vampire. Well, they say he's completely hateful and cold in person, but acts all nice on the surface. Well, all he needs is a set of fangs, and we'll know who he is. <laughs> Lou Rockwell, getting back to NAFTA and the thousands of pages of that and other key tidbits, and we really appreciate your time. Well, it's, you know, I, as I mentioned, I, I actually went through the whole NAFTA. As you say, we can, we're not allowed to look through the TPP agreement. Uh, but uh, I, I looked through the whole, in those days, the slightly freer days, I was able to look through the whole thing. And it consisted of nothing but special deals, just as you might expect. Special crony deals. Um, it didn't mean, for example, here's free trade with Mexico. I can drive my car to Mexico, fill it up with goods, bring it back and wave at the border guards on the way in. That's free trade because that's not what's allowed. Uh, everything has to be uh, operated through the crony banks, through the crony companies. They're the ones who benefit, and regular Americans get the short end of the stick, as is always the case. So these 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 are very bad deals, very bad deals. I was going to buy my dad like a twelve hundred dollar, you know, one of the cheaper tag, uh, here watches, one of the sports ones. And I'm mm -hmm. in Cancun about six months ago. I'm buying it, and then when I came back through, I'd written it down, but they knew in a computer what I'd bought and got it my face at the border. And so I went and looked it up. All that's database between the U.S. and Mexico. That's the opposite of free trade under NAFTA and GATT. Well, it's just, it's just fascism. I mean, it's just surveillance. It's the surveillance state. Talk about something else evil they're doing. Uh, every, everywhere you look in American society, the government is the enemy. The government is hurting us. They're ripping us off. They're destroying us. They're destroying our economic futures. They're destroying our children's futures. They're destroying education. They're destroying families. A $1,200 I mean, watch is, is, an, is on a computer screen at customs. 
but they can't stop the Alex, illegals. You know, I'm sure even you, knowing what you know, would be shocked if you could see what your dossier looks like and how much they know and what detail. That's true of all of us. They have unbelievable details on every aspect of our lives. But we know nothing available. about them. They're more secretive no, no, than ever. Course, as Ron Paul always says, there should be the opposite. There should be total transparency for the government. Let's have a camera in the White House and so forth. But we should have no transparency whatsoever, except what we voluntarily give up. So we should have total privacy. They total transparency. Of course, it's uh, just the opposite. Privacy We're is our greatest asset. To them. We're naked before them. They're able to pull off any scam, any ripoff, any theft, any corruption, any uh, uh, horrible tyranny, and tell us uh, it's good for us. Wow. Yeah. All right, Lou Rockwell, powerful interview. Thank you for the time, sir. Look forward to speaking to you very soon. Great to be with you. Thank you. Well, thanks so much for listening to The Lou Rockwell Show today. Take a look at all the podcasts. There have been hundreds of them. There's a link on the LRC front page. Thank you.